You ever had an idea that just you just couldn't kick? It just nagged at you, nagged at you. Well, you're not the only one. I had this idea for a while. Now we're going to do it. We're building a forced air gas forge with a hand crank blower. This is the only helium bottle that we had laying around. Seen better days. And we need to build a forge. I couldn't find any other forge bodies, so this is it. It's a little thinner than what I like using. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. Now we really could have used some masonry cutoff wheels to do this, but we just threw a kind of a worn out zirconia belt on there and ground these corners down so it would semi fit. And yes, I am wearing breathing protection. Absolutely, 100% must wear breathing protection when you're grinding these bricks. It is some nasty, nasty shit. This thing almost fit. We just gotta grind off just a little bit. We might leave it tight in there. I really don't want to. I don't want to take a chance of, you know, breaking that brick and then having to grind another one. But having it tight in there does fit with the rest of it rather well, the way it distorted and everything after welding. So we'll see. We'll put some uh, backing in there. Uh, Close it all up, get it all freaking insulated, and um, see where we sit. So, If you're anything like me when you're doing a project, I end up scrawling all over the damn thing. Especially when I'm building a forge. I basically just use the forge as a kind of a sketch pad um, to get ideas. Normally what happens is is I'll sketch it on there, get an idea of what I'm going for, and then the plan, and then I change it. Inevitably, I always change it. And so, you get a me staring at inanimate objects at different angles for long periods of time, and and ghost sketching stuff on. Uh, that's pretty much me sitting in the shop most of the time. It's not always me just yelling at inanimate objects because they won't do what I want them to do. Um, majority of it is just sitting here staring at shit and, you know, wondering what the hell I'm going to do with it because this is how I plan. This is me planning, me pre-planning. It's, and it's not even really a plan that's set in stone. I mean, the thing changes and morphs over time as I build it, as you'll see, um, when we get to the next part of this video. So if I take 1 plus 1, multiply it by 4, we get 18 over 6. I wonder, did I forget to shut the stove off? I wonder what's for dinner tonight. Huh. What am I doing? All the planning in the world isn't going to prepare you for just weird changes that come down the line. I was looking for material that I could turn into basically boxes that come on the outside of the forge. And we have this nice 316 by 3 laying around. Unfortunately, it's also the cap material for our canisters. But uh, we'll go buy more of it later for the canisters. Oh, well. You know, we're going to be cutting, making two boxes, so we need uh, four pieces of four inch by three inch and four pieces of three inch by three inch.
Welding is always a tricky thing to film. Uh, you can get the specific filters and stuff, and I might end up getting those um, later on down the line, but I mean, all the bright lights and flashes and everything, it's very, very tricky to how much welding do I put in this? How much do I leave out? And I like this like this, but I think I need to get a filter for the camera. It's a great camera, great shots, but we want to be able to see that bead. I'm going to be cutting a crescent moon out of this box here so it can fit flush on the inside of our forge. Having those cutouts on this box really makes it so much easier. You have no idea, well you may have an idea if you've done something like this before, how much easier it is to mark this out when you have it crescent out and cut out like this. It's so nice. This is super tricky right here when you're welding different thicknesses of metal together, especially one that's so thin like the tank, and we're welding it to 3 16 inch plate steel. You have to do, at least I have to do, multiple passes and stack my welds. Just a little minor surgery here. You have to take that spout out where the helium came out so we can put and plumb our burner into. This is one of the bell reducers that we modified. It's from 2 inch to 3 quarter inch. We cut the lip off of it so we can get just, just the circumference of the bell without the lip so that we can then cut out our hole and slide that bell reducer, that flare, up there and the lip will sit on the inside. We can make a better weld. If you don't have a plasma cutter, you should really get one. This is a cheapo Vivor $200 plasma, but it can cut up to 5 8 inch thick plate. Remember, this these plumbing parts here that we're using as our flare, they are cast. And so you need to preheat these either in, in your forge with a torch or in an oven before you weld them or they will crack. This stuff is spun ceramic wool insulation specifically made for furnaces and stoves and stuff like that. Uh, foundry furnaces, all that good old stuff. It is two inches thick, that's all I use. I don't use any thinner than that. Otherwise, you take a chance of overheating and really destroying your forge. I, I use two inches, I've never had a problem with it. It's really good stuff. It cuts really easy with a knife, um, sharp knife or dull knife. This is happens to be relatively sharp. You can also cut it with a pair of scissors or shears. Now, if you remember there in the beginning when we were fitting our brick to our base here, we said we were going to put some backing on it. Well, this is the backing we were talking about. And we end up having to, you know, cut out and kind of sculpt a little place for that brick to sit. How we got the brick to fit in there without really uh, grind, not grinding any more off of it was that we, we just kind of turned that base into more of an egg shape. By, by flexing it and pressing it and just bending it in place and now that brick it does fit a little tight it doesn't come out but it's not as tight as it was like it was in the beginning
You could do the same thing with like refractory if we would have poured a refractory table on the bottom of this and you then basically put your brick in a bag and place the brick down in there or wrap your brick in saran wrap, place your brick down in there, let your refractory cure and you're good to go. And we're just going to press this down in there, get an impression of where our burner is, or our flare, I should say. And then we'll pull it out. As you see there, you can see that little impression on there. And then we cut that out. You can use a knife. You can use a hole saw. I can't find my two-inch hole saw. If you use a hole saw, turn it backwards, and you'll get a nice clean cut. We will be coating this entire inside of this forge with refractory to make a nice slurry up and it'll help you know keep some of that ceramic wool from flying around and also it'll help with the refracting more heat into your piece now this is a travel forge so it will break down over time as you move it around as you pack it out to events just you know, periodically, maybe once or twice a year, just go in there and reseal it and put a new coat on it. You don't have to put a stick of coat on it when you redo it, but you just get to have to redo it maybe once or twice a year, depending on how much you use the forge. This is a cheap blower we got off of Amazon for like 39 bucks or something like that. It works pretty good. <laughs> we did screw it up. We weren't really thinking when we when we just we're gonna do this we end up marking both sides of this we didn't need to mark it i don't know why i put the hole right there uh, at the time we ended up drilling it and then we didn't end up using what we had done we ended up you know doing it around so that's why here you'll see the cut i'm cutting in front of the piece there and then we just take that off cut and we drill some holes in it and we cut it in half so Wasted effort, wasted time, but we got there in the end. Some of you might be wondering why I didn't just, you know, make a solid bar there. Well, we need to be able to get into this forge to, to do maintenance on it, and we don't want to have to be cutting everything all the time. And so what we ended up doing, we just made those brackets so it can mount there, and it holds that one side together. And this right here, what we're doing is we're cutting some feet so it sits stable on the stand that we we have. And the stand is an old chair that I put a stud on the bottom of the forge. And it's an old chair that we basically never use. It works perfect as a stand. And these are the feet that are going to go on the bottom so that it, it stays, it doesn't rock back and forth. And uh, yeah, we get a nice solid base and it works really, really good. Now this is not welded to that stand, so everything comes off. And I found an old toolbox of mine that was all screwed up. I cut the latch off of it, and then we welded the latch to the other side. That holds down that side in compression, and then when we put the blower on, that pulls everything together on the other side. Now we may have to put some more cable along that seam, but once we get this sealed up with the refractory, it should be pretty good. This right here is the first firing of this forge. Absolutely the first. 
and I kind of knew it was going to work, right? It was just like getting the the correct pressure coming out of there so you're just not freaking like burning your tent and having a fireball fly everywhere and and then figuring out you know how fast do i have to turn this can i turn it slow can i turn it you know um you know do i have to turn it super fast but everything worked out i mean it really once we figure out the correct psi to where it's when we're not using it and we're working at the anvil it's just kind of percolating there and and you know we're we're not going to be having this huge fireball come out of it like you see right here. Once we get all that dialed in and fixed up, this will be a pretty cool deal. So, um, really had a lot of fun making this thing, and I can't wait to use it. I cannot wait to use it. It's It's been a long time in the making. I've been thinking about this style of forge for a very, very long time, and I'm just glad that I had the opportunity to build it.